Good morning, everyone. Um, I have made these little journals before, and uh, they are made from an envelope. And because I'm going to put uh, some of the bigger size envelopes into my boutique group, I thought I would come on today and show you how to make one of these. Um, this is considered a catalog envelope. It's an envelope with the opening on the end. They also make them in um, kind of like a manila paper and they, they, a lot of people use them for shipping. But <clears throat> technically this one's a called a catalog envelope. Um, it's a six by nine inch envelope and it makes a real cute uh, little journal. And then these, whether they're a catalog envelope or a coin envelope or just what you want to call them, but they're the same shape. So, um, since I, like I said, since I was putting some envelopes in my um, boutique group, I wanted to come on and show you these cute little journals with the pocket. And frankly, there's a secret pocket. Because these are not stitched in and they have the elastic, you can reach all the way through and put something in that this end of the envelope. If you stitch in, them in, then you can't do that. You only have the one pocket. And there's lots of ways to decorate these envelopes. Um, as you can see, this one is painted. It, um, I used my jelly plate and painted it. This one has um, decorative scrapbooking paper. So I thought I'd show you both ways <clears throat> on how to do this and um, some of the little tricks that I have for um, doing the elastic, that kind of thing. Um, the first thing we have to have is the envelope. So we're going to start with the larger one. And I'm just going to use a painty envelope. Now, like I said, I painted these with um, my jelly plate and I did some doodling on them, that kind of thing. So you, there's lots of things you can do to decorate them, okay? These are just some of the painted envelopes. And when I paint them, I usually paint them with the flap open so that you end up with the flap and everything on the inside painted. It just gives it a cute little thing. And I like to put one layer of Mod Podge on the outside. It just gives it um, a little bit nicer finish. Okay. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our envelope and we're going to fold it in half. And I like to take a bone folder and just carefully fold it in half. Then we're going to need some paper. And the paper for a 6 by 9 inch envelope is 8.5 inches by 5.5 inches. And we're going to take that 8.5 by 5.5 inch paper and this um, I believe they call this an A5 sheet, a cut in half. I'm not sure. It, I just know that it's 8.5 by 11 inch paper is, you can just cut it in half. And I usually take a few sheets at a time to, and fold it in half. It just seems to me to work better that way. I know some people say just to fold it all at once. And I do use a bone folder. Now on this bigger um, journal, I am going to sew this together before I put it in with the elastic. I just, there's so many big pages, 
the insert will be replaceable, but if it's sewn together before you insert it, it just seems to hold it together a little bit better. So to determine how I'm going to sew it, I'm just going to use a basic three-hole pamphlet stitch, and I'm going to use my centering ruler. And uh, five and a half is um, two and three quarters on each side. So it, if it's zero in the center, two and three quarters, two and three quarters. And I'm just going to center up my ruler and mark the fold at zero, two, and two. <clears throat> and I would normally use a, a thread that is not real visible. But today I'm going to use a black one so that you can see it. Sorry, I thought I had it out. Which will be okay because I'm going to use black elastic. So, Oh, I guess it would help if I punched the holes now, wouldn't it? We do need to punch holes all the way through this insert. I am not, like I said, I'm not going to sew it into my cover. I'm just going to let that do that. Um, another reason I wanted to do an envelope journal is because I have decided to do a whole series of envelope journals. There are so many out there. And while this one's real common, I'm just poking the holes. Um... There are lots of different kinds of envelope journals, so I thought it would be fun to just do a whole series of different envelope journals. And I'm just going to fold this. You do want to be careful and not poke yourself with your pokey tool. It is not, it is not pleasant. And now I just use a large eyed needle. This one happens to be kind of long, but that just happened to be what I, what I grabbed. It's a probably a doll needle or something like that. What you want to do is you want to start, in this, it depends, if you want your tie to be on the outside, you start on the outside. If you want your tie to be on the inside, you start on the inside. And you just put your thread through the center hole. And I'm not even cutting this off this time because it just saves me on thread. And I come back from the outside to the inside. And then I go all the way to the other hole. I do not go back through this one just yet. I'm going to go all the way to this other one and go out. And then I'm going to go... First I'm going to need a little bit more thread. There we go. I'm going to go back in through this hole. And when, when I do that, I want to make sure I don't split my threads, but I also want to come up... Oh, I'm sorry. That sometimes it's hard to show you all things because it's easier just to do it than it is to show you. See, I'm going to come back through the same hole that I went out through in the middle, in the beginning. Come on. This... this uh, this is wax linen, and this particular batch of wax linen is pretty thick. Um, I, I really want you to be able to see what I was doing today, so that's why I have got such a heavy thread. Okay, and we're going to pull this, and we're going to pull this, but now, if it's really hard to see, but let me bring you in. Let me see if I can bring you all the way in. Okay, see this thread that's loose? One of this one is on one side and this one is on the other side. So that 
that thread is in the center and it moves back and forth right now but when I tie my knot see here when I tie my knot like so now the thread can't move back and forth because it was in between the two pieces and I usually tie it three times just for the sake of time Wax linen is nice because you can cut it off short and it doesn't untie. Okay, so now we have our little signature ready to go into our little book. Okay, and what we need now is our elastic closure. Okay, and this is going to be, I'm going to do that with elastic cord. Now this elastic cord comes in all kinds of packages. I had another one here. There it is. I want you to see all the different ways. Okay. Now, these are both from the sewing department. This one is from the beading or jewelry department of the hobby store. This one is a little thin. I prefer the slightly heavier cord. It just seems to... Um, hold up a little bit better. It's a little harder to maybe tie a knot in or whatever, but it, it seems to hold up better. So I'm going to use some of the sewing elastic. And what I'm going to do is first find the ends of this little rat's nest. Sorry. And I'm going to go around the outside, like so. Can you see that? I'm just, I'm just, but I have a reasonably long, you know, about a four inch piece left. And I'm going to tie a square knot. So that means, and if you look on YouTube, you can find how to tie a square knot. It is, it's a really kind of important that you tie it in a square knot because it stays then. Oops, it helps if you actually tie it though. Sorry. You can't see. For, I'm trying to <laughs> trying to show you without without moving my fingers. It doesn't work very well. Okay. My fingers are all in the way. Oh, and I didn't actually show you how to get around. Ugh. Sorry, guys. There we go. Okay. This is a square knot. Now, see, I, I've pulled it around there, and. I've t I'm tying a square knot, but I want this to be snug up against this. This piece needs to be tight. So I'm going to tie it nice and snug. I'm going to hold it with my finger and I'm going to tie the square knot. Elastic is fun to tie because you want it snug. You want this to be like rubber band tight, but you know you're trying to show people what you're doing and it's not always all that easy. Okay, then the next thing we need to do is to bring this piece around the back like so. And we're going to tie another knot right here. So this time I can cut off this mess and not have so much. I guess if I had measured it for you, you probably want, let me see, oh, about I'm guessing that's about 20 inches, 21, 22 inches of elastic. 
Um, that's, just, that's a guess. Okay, so once again, I want to tie a little knot in this, and I'm going to use a square knot. And I want it snug. If you have somebody to help you, tying elastic knots is a little easier. Okay, so now what we have is we have this piece that comes off. It's to hold our, our book in place. And we have this piece in here, which we can tuck our signature in. Okay. Now we want to decorate this little tie a little bit. So, so what I'm going to do is I have one of my little flower beads and I make these flower beads, they're glass beads. Um, and you could use, if you didn't have a flower bead, you could use a button or um, uh, just I'll show you another closure that you could use. And I'm just going to put both of these elastics up through this bead. Bring it down like so. And I'm going to tie another knot. That knot will pretty much keep it from popping off of there. And see it's 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 on there pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this mono liquid aqua glue on there. And I'm just going to dab it on like so. That will help to hold it. And then I can just clip off the excess. But that little button or bead or whatever you've used looks a little lonely on there so it's always fun to take a little bit of fiber and it doesn't take a lot probably mm, 16 inches or so and I'm just gonna fold that in half And I'm just going to wrap it around there and tie it in a knot. Yeah, I think that's a little bit long, so we're just going to trim them off. And it just gives that little bit of extra finish to it. So let me back this out now so you can see the whole thing. Um, the the elastic the closure piece now is attached to the piece that is holding your signature in the signature can now be changed and therefore is replaceable your pocket is here and of course if you open it all the way it goes all the way through to the other side and it's still usable and you have a cute little journal that you can tuck in someplace um, or put in your purse to take notes but now on the little tiny ones and I'm, I promised I would show you how to um, to cover it with paper this is just scrapbook paper on the little tiny ones which the envelope on these is five and three eighths by four and one sixteenth. And it's the same kind of envelope. But we're going to do the closure a little different. And we're going to cover this one this time with scrapbook paper. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Oh, I guess maybe it would help if I told you how big for your, your papers for the inside. You need papers that are 5 inches by 3 and 7 eighths inches. 
And we're going to fold them just like we did the big ones. Well, let's back out a little bit more. Fold them in half. This signature I'm not going to sew together. It just uh, doesn't seem to need it. And it's nice to be able to take your little notes from your purse out. But it does mean that your um, signature will be replaceable. Okay, now to finish this one, we're going to need some scrapbook paper. And I have just some lightweight scrapbook paper. And I have one of my envelopes. Now the big envelope could be covered the same way. We could, we could put scrapbook paper on this big envelope. Okay. Um, you need to make sure your paper is 6 inches, or it's 12 inches, because you're going to need both pieces of it. You may, you, this scrapbook paper may not be quite big enough. You might have to have two sheets of it, which usually the pad has two sheets, or two to three sheets of paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is I like to use an old catalog when I'm glue sticking. And I use Elmer's Extreme Glue. I like it best when I'm glue using a glue stick. And I am going to put glue stick all over this envelope. Okay. And I'm going to set that aside, and I'm going to use a little of our mono liquid aqua glue, and I'm going to go around all four of the edges, all, all along the edge, about a quarter of an inch in, but just a little bit of it, okay? This just makes sure that our glue sticks. We don't want to have any... Um, of our paper lifting up. Okay. And I'm just going to put it, stick it right along the edge. Like so. And then you want to burnish it down nice. You want to make sure it's going to stick real well. Okay. And, well, it's going to be one of those days, I can tell. And we're just going to cut this out. Being careful not to cut our envelope. Let's back Sometimes it's easier to get rid of the big piece so that you can trim it up very neatly. Afterwards. Okay. Now we want to cover this inside lip. And remember, this big envelope is the same shape and the same, everything about it is exactly the same. So I just need a little bit of paper that's about the same size width as the envelope. So I'm going to put a Let's trim it up. And it doesn't have to be real straight on this end because we're going to trim it in a minute further. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to take this nice straight edge and it's going to tuck down in my envelope. And see, it doesn't tuck in real well. It's just a little wide. So we're going to trim it off a tiny little bit at a time until it tucks nicely into my envelope. 
and it's still just a touch too tight. You see how nice that goes in now? And it's just going to be just inside the envelope. Okay? Now, that page has got wet glue on it, so I'm just going to change the page. And again, I'm going to just glue stick this real well. On this one, I don't try to get the liquid glue in. It's just too, it's too hard to be sure I get it in the right place. Come on. Sorry, my finger's in the way. I'm sorry. Okay. Apparently, I didn't get it quite narrow enough to go in there. Thought I did, but there we go. That's better. So once I get that in there, I can turn this over and rub it really good. All right. We can use our bone folder and rub on it if we want. And then I can trim it off. Okay. Now we could leave the inside of our little uh, journal white if we wanted, but I really like to go ahead and cover the inside. But to do that, I need to have this fold line. I need to know where it's at. So I just fold it down, and that way I can see it. Sometimes it helps if I want to go ahead and... Um, ink my edge. It gives me a, a real good line where it's folded. And then I go ahead and ink up my envelope. But when you're up here close to this top edge, be careful. Don't get too close and um, go over onto your scrapbook paper. You want to get along the edge, but not... Don't go over. And if I were doing the bigger envelope, it would be the same thing. Then again, I'm going to go around all the edges. And this is why it's very helpful to have that fold line in there because you can you can either lay it on this way which works real well or you could turn it over either either way so see I could turn it over and and glue it down like so But you only want it up to the fold line. You do not want it past. Okay. Now we're going to cut this one out. Remember to be careful not to cut your envelope. Doesn't make a good pocket if it's cut open.
I didn't trim real carefully. Alrighty. So now, one of the things that's hard, the regular envelope has a little bit of a dent in here, okay? But when we've put added this piece of uh, paper to it, it's hard to get our fingers in there. So what I do is I take my circle punch and I just tuck it in there. Now, not all the way. I just tuck it in there a tiny little bit so that I get a little tiny piece taken out. Let me put a piece of paper in there so you can see it. See that nice little curve out of it? And that's just by taking a, a circle punch and chomping it out. Then I thought these looked cute with um, inked edges. So I'm going to go ahead and ink the edges. Distressing the edges. They just looked kind of vintagey that way. And these make fabulous little gifts to tuck into things. You can tuck one in a card. We're going to go ahead and ink this just a little bit so you can find it. Ink out here. Now, I hope that you like this video, and I hope you like my other videos. Um, like I said, I want to do a whole series of envelope journals. I think they would be fun. So we'll find out, we'll find some other ways to make journals with envelopes. Now, once we get this down, we're going to fold it in half. Now, I would normally wait for this to dry before I folded it in half. That's one of the things you've got to be careful of is not to let your paper pull off when you're folding it. And if it was dry, it wouldn't do that. Now, isn't that so cute already? But we have to put our closure and our band to hold it, uh, hold our signature in. We, you know, we, we have this little signature in here we have to put in, and um, we need our band to hold it in. So what I'm going to do is when I come, when I wanted to do these little ones, I found that hair ties, hair bows, hair elastics, the excuse me, these wonderful hair elastics are perfect. To do that, we could tie it the way we just did this, if that's if you have yardage in your elastic. But these hair elastics are are just perfect. So what we do, what I do is, is I go ahead and I have my pages already made. And by the way, did I tell you how big to make these? They were five inches by seven and three eighths inches. And I put this hair elastic on there. Now, when I do that, I put it so that the metal piece is on the inside. Let me bring you back in again. I'm sorry for making you dizzy. Okay, and I make sure that my hair, let my metal piece is on the inside where it won't show out here. Okay. Then, I'm going to put it like that. That way you should be able to see it. Yep. Okay, then what I do is I look at my hair, other piece, my other hair elastic. You have to have two to do this, and I put my like little metal piece so that it's so that I'm pulling on it, and it's sitting in the middle. And I fold it like this, and you see I've got this little loop. And I take that little loop, and then I take the other end, which is also a loop, and I put one loop through the other one. And then when I pull it up. You see my hair elastic stays on there. And what I can do is I can put the little metal piece will stay on the front and when I stretch it around like this 
it's plain on the back and the little metal pieces on the front and we're going to put our little decorative closure piece right on top of that metal piece which makes it really cute so what we need now is we need a little piece to put on the back it's just it could be a square it could be a circle I usually use my little half inch punch and make a little circle and this is just craft card stock okay um, it's just some nice craft color cardstock. Any cardstock would work. This just happens to be a scrap out of my scrap bin. And I'm going to put that under there like so. Okay. And I am going to put some nice lovely glue. And th for this, I like to use tacky glue. And I'm going to put a good amount. Okay. And then, I again, I found that the closure idea I had was just a little blah without a little fiber. I thought the fibers really added to it. And what I'm going to use is one of these little metal flowers. And this is just a, you could use a button. You, there's all sorts of things you could use, but, and I just bent it a little bit. It, it had, um, they tend to be raised. I don't know if you can see that. And I wanted it to be more of a little bowl shape. So I just bent it a tiny little bit. But I'm going to take a little tiny bit of this fiber. Just a few little inches. And I'm just going to kind of roll it up and stick it on top of that sticky stuff, uh, the tacky glue that I've got there. Okay. And then I'm going to take this little metal flower and stick it down on top of there. Um, if you don't have enough glue for it to pop If the glue does not come around the flower, you want to add a little more glue. And I'm going to have to. Okay. My fiber decided it wanted to pull up when I picked it up. So I'm just going to put a little more glue on top of my fiber. Making sure to put it in the middle so that it's not all over my little book. And I'm going to set my little, and if you can see, see how the glue oozed up, we want that. We want that to, so that we know that the tacky glue will dry clear. It won't be real noticeable. And now I'm going to take three or three little seed beads, just because it just adds to the the fun of the closure and I'm going to put those three little seed beads in that little bit of glue that came up around the flower. Just like so. And like I said, you see that there's white, there's glue and that's okay. I'm just going to show you this one. And then you just hold it. And you put it back on. Now I'm going to take you back out so that, sorry, should warn you that this is going to be a long ride. Now, because I have this all gluey, I will undo this and take it off of my um, little book. 
while it dries because I don't want it to stick to the book. And if you're having trouble with it and you're not sure it's going to stick, put your glue bottle on top of it or something else that's heavy. Usually it will just stick right down there. And of course today, because you're watching, it doesn't want to. There we go. And see now you have a little bit of fiber. You have your little background that keeps it all contained. And we have our little books. Okay, I'm just going to slip this back on so you can see it. Playing with it when it's wet is not a wise decision. <laughs> but this is, this is um, how you can make one style of envelope journal that has a pocket from catalog and coin envelope. Um, I hope you really enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Um, I am going to do more envelope journals. And um, if you do need envelopes, you can contact me or you can find them in my boutique group, which is listed down below. And I'm going to read you a quote from our 1001 Ways to Creativity. The questions that the heart asks are always more universal than those the mind asks. And that's true. Sometimes the creativity quote is hard for me to understand how it's creativity, but I guess it's that is true. Okay, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. Have fun. Go make some art. Bye-bye.